Good morning. Welcome to Heritage Baptist Church. It's good to see you all today. Grab a songbook near you if you would and turn to number 305, number 305 in your songbooks. And let's stand together as we sing Praise Him, Praise Him. Number 305. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In His arms, He carries them all day long. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful songs. Good singing. Let's take a minute and greet those around us this morning. Let's find our way back to our seats. We'll start again on that third verse. That last verse together. Sing it out. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Amen. The turnover to number 498. Number 498, we introduced this last week as our chorus of the month. Number 498, Every Day with Jesus. Let's sing it together. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Amen. Good morning. 
If you notice, Pastor is not here. Pray for him. He's actually going to be released from the hospital within about an hour, hour and a half, um, with no answers. So not great news, but please be in prayer for him. Uh, also, uh, if you would, uh, we mentioned this Wednesday night. Please be in prayer for Gwen Simmons. That's Joe Simmons' mom. Is she still hospitalized? She's still in the hospital? She's at Masonic Care. She's been having some major breathing issues, so uh, awaiting some tests. So please be in prayer for him, her. And then uh, Tom Dumont, that's Ken Lacombe's uncle, has got stage one vocal cord cancer. That was a fairly recent diagnosis, I believe. So please keep all of these folks in your prayers. And for pastors' sake, just pray that they can get some answers at some point here in the near future. Uh, but let's pray to start this morning's service. Dear Lord, thank you uh, for allowing us to be here this morning. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this family, these people. Uh, just, it's, it's been a, a crazy couple of weeks, Lord, with pastor in and out, but you've been faithful and the people have been faithful Lord, thank you for that. We've got multiple people that have been in and out of hospitals with surgeries and sicknesses. Lord, we're asking you to bless them, to heal them, give the doctors and nurses wisdom in those situations, Lord. But we're here in church this morning asking you to do something special for us, Lord, uh, remove distractions, help us to focus and to pay attention on what you have for us this morning and Lord, thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Uh, if you need a bulletin, if you would, raise your hand. The ushers of lovely, lovely ushers would love to grab you one. Um, Mr. Stewart's not here, so they are lovely, all right? And he's also not here to defend himself. If you need a bulletin, please grab that. There are multiple things coming up here in the near future. Uh, the big one, and we'll do most of the announcements at the end of service, but the big one is next Sunday is Easter. Uh, so please be in your places for that. We will have an Easter egg hunt for our younger kids. Uh, those that are normally in my junior church, we're skipping you. No, we have some special stuff planned for just for you guys, uh, but we will have an Easter egg hunt specifically for the younger children, so we'd love to have you here for that. Um, so Lord willing, Pastor will be here uh, in his place for that. Uh, do we, while the ushers are still out, do we have anyone that this is your first time with us this morning? You've never been here to church before? Any visitors? We've got one. Got a cool guy with a beard back there. I don't know you, but uh, the gentleman right behind you has got a visitor's packet. Did you already give him one? Fantastic. There's a little card in there. If you'd fill that out, we'd love that. Uh, you can drop that in the offering plate later on. Thank you for being with us this morning. Other than that, I believe, outside of Pastor not being here, this might be a normal Sunday. I plan on keeping all of my clothes on during church this morning. Uh, if you weren't here last week, that was a little weird. Brother Rob, that was his first thing he asked me this morning. You keeping your clothes on today? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to walk away now. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Take your side. It's a valid question. Apparently I didn't never thought I'd have to ask that in church, but apparently now I do. So take your songbooks once again, if you would please, and turn to number 506, number 506 in your songbooks. You can remain seated as we sing blessed assurance number 506. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, lost in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. On that last verse, perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. I appreciate your faithfulness uh, to church, faithfulness to the Lord, and faithfulness in tithes and offerings, of course. There has never been a day when the Lord has not been faithful to us. He's not been in the word, a day where he's not been good to us. And uh, so regardless of... of uh, what the economy looks like, regardless of what society is saying and all that stuff. Of course, God is still good. God is still faithful. We need to make sure that we are still good and faithful back to him. And this is our opportunity to do that as we take up our offering. Mr. Reemers from where you are, would you pray for our offering this morning, please? If you turn with me to John chapter number one, book of John, it's the fourth book in the New Testament, book of John chapter number one. We're going to read the first eight verses together. John chapter one. Once you found it, if you'd stand with me, please. I'll read verse one. You'll join me on verse two and we'll go back and forth all the way down to verse eight. None of these verses are terribly long, but John chapter number one, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And let's pray. Dear Lord, again, thank you for allowing us to be in church. Lord, I'm asking you to bless those that are working with our kids in the nurseries and the junior church. Lord, I'm asking you to bless this service, bless the song and the sermon here to follow. I'm just asking you to, to give me the words and the wisdom as I speak this morning and help, the, help those that are listening, help them to, to remove distractions, help us to pay attention I believe there's something God's got for us this morning, and I'm just, I'm hoping we'll catch that, Lord. Again, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Atonement Day is at hand. A little boy and his lamb make their way to the tabernacle door. As the lamb was led away, a tear streamed down his face as he watched from a distance. You could hear him say, my little lamb, you cannot stay for my sin the price 
you must pay a sacrifice that is so great, my little lamb, you must go away. God looked down from heaven's throne, he saw us hopeless and alone, to redeem us he would have to send his son. As Jesus left that holy place, a tear streamed down God's face, all of heaven then grew silent. You could hear God say, My precious Lamb, you cannot stay. Man to redeem the price you must pay. My only Son, I will give away. Oh, precious Lamb, you must go today. Praise the Lamb, hallelujah, praise the Lamb, almighty Lamb, I'm so glad you came, my every sin you have washed away, you saved my soul, now I can say, Thank you, Brother Rob. Can I say this without being offensive? Legit, that was one of your best solos. That was, wow, that was good. Okay, next week is Easter. Next week is Easter, and we are going to kind of vaguely talk about Easter without talking about Easter today. Hey, a lot of people call this Palm Sunday. You know, it's the week before Jesus' crucifixion. We're not going to talk about that at all. But we are going to kind of talk about Easter, just a little bit, okay? One of the announcements I will make that Brother Rob doesn't have to is tomorrow is a terrible day. It is the end of spring break and we have to go back to school. Okay, I'm pretty sure the teachers are less excited about that than anybody else. Parents are probably extremely excited about that because you realize what we get to do seven hours a day, five days a week. I love your kids, but I really don't want to see them tomorrow. Um, the one thing I am looking forward to, and actually a prayer request, uh, my dad's trainer, Sam. we got to plug a gym story in here somewhere. Sam is coming in to teach my PE class tomorrow to the junior high and high school. Uh, Sam's coming to church tomorrow. Now, it's not for church, but Sam's coming to church tomorrow. So please... Please pray that that's good. Please pray that our junior high and high school aren't idiots. I'm looking at you, Tom. And he's giggling because he knows I'm right, okay? Um, but please, I'm, I'm, I'm actually asking, please pray about that. That's, uh, there's, Sam's, there's some big things happening there, and I'm just praying that that does something. So that, that's, that's a positive. I'm also mildly excited because my students get to meet. I got a new classroom pet this week. Hey, uh, Alicia Armstrong, somebody she works with, was rehoming a, a painted turtle. Do we have that picture, guys? No, apparently not. There we go. So I got a turtle. Okay, she's cute. She's about 12 years old. She's an Eastern painted turtle. Uh, she moved into my classroom, and I had a really rough time saying no because it was free. And I have enough of my mom's genetics in me that free is very important stuff. Okay, free is the best price for anything, uh, but came with a complete setup. I, I made a couple little upgrades here and there and changed up some food and stuff. She's, she's pretty cool. So if you've got ideas, by the way, she doesn't have a name. If you have ideas, Shelly will not work because that's just dumb, okay? Um, it is a girl. I've had a bunch of people offer names of the Ninja Turtles, 
who were all boys, please don't, it's a girl, needs to be gender appropriate, no weird gender neutral stuff, we don't play that, God created two of them, hey, male and female, all right, that's not worth cheering over, but okay, all right. But this little girl moved in, and I, I'm actually really excited about that. Reptiles has kind of become my thing. I also, uh, part of what we did on spring break is we went up to New England Reptile Distributors. They go by NERD. That's their acronym. Uh, Kevin McCurley, the guy that runs NERD, is, uh, is actually one of three guys responsible for bringing ball pythons into the United States as part of the pet trade. He and a couple other guys used to fly to Africa to pick these up and then breed them and all kinds of stuff. And it's, we got to do a private tour of the facility. Girls really loved it. Ellie was actually mad at us because we wouldn't let her buy a tarantula that day. My kids are weird, okay? Um, but with that, I mean, it's, she's cute and it was free. I have a really hard time saying no to free, especially when it's cute. Now, granted, I'm also gonna have a classroom pet for probably about 30 more years. I really hope I'm not teaching your kids for 30 more years. <laughs> somebody might die, it'll probably be me or Ryan, it's going to be one of the two, okay? But I had a really rough time saying no to something that's free. And by the way, I've told everybody, I saw the Gerbers yesterday morning at the soul winning meeting, and I'm pretty sure it was like the third thing out of my mouth. I got a turtle, and it was free, Hey, right? Miss Dreamers, that's how mom talked about everything. It was, here's what I got, and then here's how much I paid for it, okay? Christmas. You're opening a present. If you don't like it, it's okay. I only paid $1.87. <laughs> don't tell us that. Just act like it was really expensive and that you just sacrificed over this. No, I got it on clearance. That's just that. Free. It's free. Now, let's go a completely different track. I'll come back to the turtle. Okay? John chapter 1. The first few verses of John chapter 1 are of massive importance. Guys, if you can go ahead and just change the slide there, I'd appreciate it. This book, the book of John, sometimes referred to as the Gospel of John or the Gospel according to John. It's one of the first four books of the New Testament called the Gospels. The Gospel meaning good news. Okay, The reason they got that title is because they're all about Jesus. The best news that you can tell anybody about. So the books are written actually in slightly different formats depending on who the audience was officially supposed to be. The book of Matthew showed that Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of Jewish prophecy. Read through the beginning, especially the beginning portion of the book of Matthew. Over and over and over again, Matthew lets the reader know that this is Jesus, and here's the prophecy that he fulfilled. He's literally, he, he helps tie all those little pieces together, proving that of the roughly, was it like almost 3,000 different prophecies regarding Jesus, he fulfilled all of them, okay? Mark showed Jesus as the ultimate servant, okay? Mark was specifically written to a group of people known as the Romans, and he was just regarding Jesus as, and, and that's where you get into the multiple stories of Jesus washing people's feet and taking, you're talking, it's Lord God Almighty in human flesh, and he was serving others. And that's the focus of the book of Mark. Luke shows the Lord as he was. Luke was a physician, okay? Luke is also responsible for the book of Acts, and if you've ever read both Acts or the book of Luke, Kind of very matter of fact, very black and white. And he kind of shows the, the duality of, of Jesus, where he's all man and all God. And he puts both of those together. Luke chapter 2 is where we get what you and I commonly refer to as the Christmas story that we a lot of us read on Christmas Day. Um, because he's showing Jesus' humanity and Godhood all at the same time. Book of John, though, John wrote his gospel specifically to prove that Jesus was God. Look at the first five verses with me again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John 1, 1 through 5 is basically repeating stuff we learned in Genesis chapter 1. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. If you don't know where that's at, it should be like the second or third page of your Bible, okay? Usually you go inside, there's a fly leaf, there's like the concordance or basics that tells you where, where all the books are at, and then there's like a title page, and then Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, 
And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. John starts off paraphrasing this little chunk of scripture. Go back to John 1. In the beginning. That's not even a paraphrase. That's direct. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He starts this entire book off. Before anything else, there was God. And he's the one that created everything. He's given all the credit, all the glory. John starts the book off with that. Just letting you, as, you and I as the reader know, this whole thing is about God. Everything is about God. But then he pauses in verse 6. He veers off track just a little bit. Look at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. By the way, different John than the author. We're going to get to that. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And we're introduced in John's gospel, at least, we're introduced to John the Baptist. Okay? This, John the Baptist, a very unique man in your Bible. He's actually considered the last of the Old Testament prophets. Okay? He is kind of the transition line between Old Testament and New Testament. Okay? Does anybody know how much of a gap there was between, if you will, the tr last true Old Testament prophet and John the Baptist? How much time? It's about 400 years. That means for about four centuries, God did not directly speak to his people through a man of God. They had scripture, but that was kind of all they had. And all of a sudden, this dude shows up on the scene. Okay, John the Baptist. And by the way, you think I'm weird? This guy has me beat by a lot. Okay? He, Bible notes that he wore camel's skin, camel hair. By the way, not a common thing to wear, even in this time period, okay? So he's dressed a little funky. He was out in the wilderness. He's kind of in the middle of nowhere, and crowds of people were showing up. He was running, if you will, the very first camp meetings way back in the day, okay? If you don't know what the camp meeting movement was, it came out shortly after the Civil War, and it was basically you took your family on vacation to a campground and listened to preaching eight to ten hours a day. By the way, half our kids would die if we tried to make them do that. Maybe we should. By the way, that's why we go to camp. I can tell you in those four and a half days with no technology and, what, probably about six hours a day of preaching, God does some amazing things. If your kids aren't already signed up for camp, come to the meeting immediately after church this morning and sign them up for camp. You're welcome. Okay. Mostly because he and I get to run about half of it, and it's pretty fun. Okay. We have not lost a single kid yet. Well, okay. Not permanently lost, okay? A few got lost on their own accord. And remember the video we showed a couple years ago where the big, big, big kid jumps in the pond and goes down the video cut? I had like four people after church ask me, is that kid okay? Because we never show him coming back up out of the water. We had a meeting and he was there the other day and he was talking about that. And I was like, yeah, we, we worried a bunch of old people in our church because they thought <laughs> you died. Um, He's still alive. His name's Brett. He's a nice kid. All right. But we've got this guy, John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist, this is not actually his true introduction. We need to go back to the book of Luke. Should only be one book before this. Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. I mentioned earlier, Luke chapter two is the one that you and I would refer to as the Christmas story, the Christmas account. We, a lot of our families will read this on Christmas morning at some point. But Luke chapter one is almost exclusively about somebody else. It's about John the Baptist. Okay? If you actually break this down here just a little bit, Luke chapter 1, look at verse 5. We're not going to read this whole chapter. It's quite lengthy, but we're going to read portions of it. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, so his wife's also a Levite, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. So we're given an indication that this, this priest and his wife, they're not just good people. They would hold the title of what you would excellent 
people. Like, the Bible calls them righteous. You realize there's not a lot of people that God chose to put down permanently called righteous. And these two are listed in there, both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Okay, There's a lot of commandments in the Old Testament. And these two were listed as being blameless. No one could find major fault with them. Impressive couple. Are we okay so far? Look at verse number uh, 7. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they were both now well stricken in years. This, was, this, this is where we get into, this is a big deal. Okay? To not have children in the Jewish culture usually meant that you were probably cursed by God. That maybe there was some kind of sin in the family and God had punished you by not giving you any children. And we're also given the idea here that they were senior saints. They was old people. Okay, well stricken in years. And it came to pass, verse 8, that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So he's just doing his job. And according to Old Testament tradition, what they would do is they'd cast lots. And each month, basically, you kind of got a different job. Or each year, there was a bunch of different factors to that. And you got a different job in the priest's office. Well, his was to go in and burn incense in the temple. So he's going in to do his job. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Okay? These guys, according to a couple of verses prior, they're not young anymore. And all of a sudden, an angel shows up while Zacharias is doing his job. Says, you're going to have a kid, and you're going to name him John. Okay, those of you that are pastor's age, mid-60s and older, if God shows up and says, hey, guess what? You're having a baby. How many of you are super excited about that? I mean, you like your grandkids, right? But you also like that they go home, okay? So we got old people about to become first-time parents. Well, guess what? Zacharias wasn't entirely sure he believed this, okay, as a human being. Would you believe that? No, okay? Would you be excited about that? Eh, maybe for about five seconds, and then, oh, no. Okay, I have four. The Seelys have like 37. <laughs> there comes a point in time where you're just like, you know what? I love kids, but I don't want any more. These two, they've wanted kids their whole life. They've been praying for one. But at this point, they're, we don't, we're not given any direct indication as to their exact age. But you have to imagine, if the Bible calls them well-stricken in years, they're not spring chickens anymore. And they're, hmm, okay. Look at verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Well, of course they will. Old people having babies is not normal. Right? The world record, by the way, for that is a 64-year-old woman had a baby. Can I just say, ew? Is that okay? That's kind of ew. Um, yeah. Okay? I, I know. That's a terrible thing. Life is precious, but ew. Okay? Um, verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And this is the first time. Not only was it weird to get an indication that you're going to have a baby. Could you imagine the baby announcement coming from an angel? Okay, gender reveals and baby announcements have turned into this big production in the last few years. But this one's revealed by angel. I think that one wins kind of every time here. But they're given indication here in verse 15, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. This was unique. This child was going to be very different. Remember, he's the last of the Old Testament prophets. Read through your Old Testament. Were people filled with the Holy Ghost, yes or no? Yes, but temporarily. He was going to be filled with the Holy Ghost from before his birth. This kid was going to be unique. This kid was going to be different. 
you can actually read through. By the way, the incredulity that I gave Zacharias credit for, he starts talking about that in the following verses. So the angel actually tells him, since you don't believe me, I'm going to mess with you. You're not going to be allowed to talk until he's born. Ryan is dealing with laryngitis and his friends are trying to get him to stop talking to save his voice. Talk all you want, buddy. I'm hoping it goes away for nine months. Class would be so much more fun if Ryan couldn't talk, okay? It'd be a little less interesting, okay? But could you imagine all of a sudden you just... Hmm. 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 It says hi. That's, by the way, sign language wasn't invented. This would have been his only form of communication was writing stuff down for months. Partially because he didn't believe. And God's going to prove him wrong. But this kid, John, is about to be very unique. We get his story here talking to Zacharias through verse 25. Then it jumps ahead into verse 57. This is where John the Baptist is going to be born. Okay, Verse 57, now Elizabeth's time, full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. Remember he told, the angel told Zacharias there would be a joy and rejoicing? Well, here it is. Okay? So let's jump to verse 66, though. Verse 66. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts. There's a bunch of things that happened in here. It says, and they made signs to his father how he would have had him called. So they're trying to get, figure out what, what are you going to name the baby? Zacharias still can't talk. And he comes out and he, it, verse 63, and he asked for a writing table and wrote saying his name is John. This was a little bit odd because naming your son not after yourself or another family member was very abnormal in Jewish culture. Hey, read through the genealogy of Jesus. How many of the same exact names are used over and over and over again? Because that was just that was kind of tradition. Okay? You had family members named after family members. Well, apparently no one in their family was named John. And all of a sudden we got this kid named John and verse 64, his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosened and he spake and praised God. Verse 65, and fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts saying, what manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. So even at his birth, everybody's marveling and thinking, what kind of kid is this going to be? This, this kid's going to be unique. Read through part of Luke chapter 1. When Mary shows up to Elizabeth's house, the baby recognized Jesus inside Mary's womb. There, this, this kid was unique. We always kind of think of John the Baptist as this old, grizzled man. Okay? You realize Jesus was how old when he was crucified? 33. John the Baptist was only anywhere between six and nine months older than him. So we're talking early 30s. Part of the reason I chose this particular picture here is because this guy's right about the same age bracket. Relatively young man. Think my age. Now, likely had a big beard. I put this guy in the mountains because that gives us an idea. He wore camel skin. He ate weird food. He ate locusts and honey. And that could have meant a couple things. Locust is a plant that grows there. Locust trees. It could have been that. It was more than likely bugs because it's a good source of protein with honey, by the way. Don't knock it till you try it. Crickets and locusts and grasshoppers are decent, especially if they're deep fried. They're crunchy and f full of protein. Actually, pound for pound, crickets and grasshoppers have more protein than beef. I can't say they taste as good as a nice medium rare sirloin, but they'll meet the need when you need it. Okay. By the way, for John the Baptist's sake, he's out preaching in the middle of nowhere. And if you read through his messages that he's going off on, John the Baptist was eating this stuff while he's preaching. Everybody's paying attention when you just randomly grab a grasshopper, dip it in honey, and munch on it in the middle of a sermon. I took my coat off, and Mr. Bailey almost fell out of his chair. Right? Could you imagine eating like bugs with honey in the middle of church? Who's paying attention now? It might have been a bit of an illustration for all we know, but John the Baptist is a unique, very special man. Go back to John chapter 1. 
We're just kind of laying a foundation here. We're going to get to the main part of the message. And that part's actually pretty short. Eh? But I just, we need to build up. John chapter 1 and verse number 6, we are introduced to John. We've already read this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. If you continue reading through John chapter 1, verses 8 through 14, we're given the indication that John preached about Jesus. He is the direct forerunner. We're talking immediately before. He's telling everybody, a Savior is coming. The Messiah is here. He's preaching Jesus. We get that indication. And you realize in John's instance, that's an odd message to preach. Because Jesus was his cousin. I have some weird cousins. I don't want to preach about my cousins. I don't want you to know about some of them. Now, I will say this. We're never given any indication in scripture when John started preaching. Zero. We know that Jesus' ministry started when he was roughly 30 years old. Because he ministered for about three, almost three and a half years before he was crucified. So around that 30 range. Are we okay? John, we don't know when he started preaching, but his entire ministry was pointing to his cousin, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're given indication of that in verses 8 through 14. Verses 15 through 18, he actually introduces the world to Jesus. He, Jesus showed up at one of his sermons and he pointed out, that's the one I'm talking about. By the way, that must have been an odd day. We're not given any indication in scripture that Jesus showed up to any of John's prior messages. Or camp meetings, if you will, out in the wilderness. And all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. The guy I've been telling you about for years, that's him right there. You realize at that particular moment, a whole bunch of people stopped listening to John and were now followers of Jesus. By the way, we're given direct indication of that because a bunch of people left John and started following Jesus. He lost a chunk of his ministry the moment Jesus showed up. He spent his whole life talking about somebody else and was willing to give up the ministry he had built when it was Jesus' turn. Verses 19 through 21, he refuted his doubters. He, has to, he, had, to, he had people that doubted who he was and his veracity, and he had to refute them and, and actually go against them and prove them wrong, by the way. Verses 22 through 28 he proclaims his place. He actually gives us the indication that he is one of the last of the prophets and he is there sent by God to tell people about Jesus. Verses 29 through 34 is one of the most impactful and important things that John does during his lifetime. He baptizes the Lord Jesus. This man sent from God, whose name was John, he spent his entire life his entire work talking about somebody else. See, that's so different than you and I. Our favorite person is us. You ever talk to somebody who somehow steers every conversation to talking about themselves? And like, doesn't matter what it is, they have done it and they're better than you. They're the one-uppers in the world. Anybody? How many of you are big fans of one-uppers? Like, they, you just love people like that. Oh, good. I'm not the only... They, they annoy me. Especially when you can one up them. And then they have and then they start digging real deep into the one up well, and you're like, okay, you win that one, weirdo. Hey? John spends his whole life focusing on someone else, his whole ministry, but never tries to one up him. Not once. Go to Jeremiah chapter number one. We're gonna be looking at a lot of chapter ones today. Jeremiah chapter number one. John wasn't the only one who was actually called, if you will, from a child to do something special. Now, John's the only one that we're given direct credit in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ himself, that he was filled with the Holy Ghost from before his birth, but not the only one called as a child. Samuel was called as a child and given uh, the ability to become the next prophet, the next high priest, and the next judge of Israel. He had multiple jobs. You realize Samuel was the last of the judges. He was the last person that was physically in charge of all of, if you will, their religious happenings and their politics simultaneously before a king stepped in. 
called as a child. Multiple kings in Israel were called as children or put into position as children, some of which did right in the sight of the Lord, others which did evil in the sight of the Lord. But Jeremiah chapter number one, look at verse number four. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Now, if you've read through this you, you, and you've studied your Bible a bit, Jeremiah was likely not much of a child. He was probably in his 30s or 40s, but he was young enough that he thought, you know what, God, I can't do this. But God's called me to say something and God even de declares here at the end, don't worry about it. Say not, I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. You're going to go because I'm going with you. John, by the way, wasn't going it alone. He was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. He had the Lord with him. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John put that disclaimer first before he tells us about a man sent from who? Sent from God. Okay? You and I, folks, we've been called. Okay? When someone gets saved, we refer to them a lot of times in church as a baby Christian. The Bible calls them as newborn babes. Okay? So if that's true, shouldn't you and I that have been in church for a long time be a little bit more like grown-up Christians? Why aren't we acting like it? Why aren't we doing something about it? Romans chapter number one. I told you, we're going to look at a lot of chapter ones today. Romans chapter one. <clears throat> Romans chapter one. Look right at the first verse here. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Let me get there myself. Give me just a moment. Romans chapter 1, verse number 1. It's in the Bible somewhere. There it is, okay? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. So he's called to be an apostle. You and I can't be called to be an apostle. We haven't had physical contact with Jesus. We can't do that, okay? Anybody who tells you otherwise didn't read their Bible very well, okay? But the second half of this, separated unto the gospel of God. That one we can do. Look down here a little bit farther. Look at verse number six. Okay? Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are called to be saints. We're called to be Christians. We're called to be Christ-like. Okay? Jump to Romans chapter 8. Couple should be just a few pages away. Romans chapter 8, probably one of the most recognized verses in your Bible about a calling of God. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Well, it's right there in the middle of this passage that we get this important part. We know that all things work together for, uh, for good to them that love God. We usually focus on that one little portion of the verse that if you follow God, everything's going to work out. Which is accurate because God's got it all picked out. He's got it all planned and he knows exactly what's going to happen. Good, bad, and ugly. God put it in your life for a reason. But it's the second portion. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Well, what is his purpose? To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Your salvation is not supposed to stop with you. Next week is Easter. We're going to spend the entire day focusing on the glory and the power and the of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's what allows you and I to even have entrance into heaven. Not the fact that he died, but the fact that he resurrected. Amen. But here's the thing. Who are we telling about it? I 
I'm just supposed to be a witness. There was a man sent from God whose name was Tim, the firstborn among many brethren. It's my job to tell others about it. How many people have you told about Jesus lately? God's been amazingly good to us. I told you I'd go back to the turtle. I got a free turtle this week. Well, there's about 180 people in this room, and guess who I told about my free turtle? All the people. I told people at the gym. I've told random strangers that I don't know. I've told all of you. I called family, friends. I got a free turtle, because free gifts you tell people about. Salvation was offered to you and I freely, but we don't tell anybody. Explain that one to me. Free turtle is nothing. Free turtle means squat in the scheme of life. Is it fun? Yes. Was it great to watch it bite the head off a goldfish the other day? Amazing. Does it get me into heaven? Does it change my life? Salvation's free. Salvation will change your life. Salvation gets you in eternity in heaven. But we won't be witnesses of that light. We won't be the firstborn among many brethren. We went to New England Reptile Distributors and I got to talk to the owner, Kevin McCurley. We weren't planning on chatting with him. He was literally in front of a hundred gallon plastic tote full of cockroaches that he uses as feeders for some of his animals. And I just started talking to him about bugs. Yeah, I'm weird. It's okay. And he's just, oh yeah, he's telling me all about these different types. There's lobster roaches and dubia roaches and orange roaches and death's head roaches. And he's going off. This guy's been doing this for 40 years. And he just literally hands me a roach like this big. Here, check this out. Uh, Okay. I don't like bugs. Hey, I'm not a big fan of bugs. My mom scarred me for life when I was a kid. You know those like little woolly worms, the orange and red, black, like little caterpillars. My mom, her words, wasn't going to have some sissy boy. So she made me hold one in the, it's one of my very first memories. I was four years old, crying my eyes out in the driveway, crawled up my sleeve, out my neck, down the, mm, it didn't work. I still have this innate fear of bugs. So thanks mom, <laughs> screwed that up. Yay. <laughs> Talking to this guy about bugs and he, he asked me what I do. And I told him I was a school principal and a teacher and he definitely not like us. He's got a ponytail down to his waist. He's the lead singer of a heavy metal band. Um, it, He hasn't grown out of the 80s, and he's like 59 years old, okay? Um, But finds out I'm a principal of a school and a teacher, and he goes off on what's going on in the public schools, hates all of it. Well, I said, well, you know, I don't have to deal with that because I'm actually the principal of a private Christian school. And he's like, thank you for having a moral compass. That was his response. And I got to talk to him for just a moment about what I do and what we do here at church. I don't know if Kevin's ever gotten a chance to talk to a Christian before. I don't know if anyone's ever taken the five seconds to tell him about Jesus. But I got to for just a little bit the other day. Maybe that planted a little bit of a seed. I could have just sat there and talked to him about reptiles and lizards and turtles and bugs all day long. Because the man knows more than I will ever know. But I got to talk about Jesus for just a little bit. I work with a trainer at the gym. Dad works with a trainer at the gym, neither one of which are saved. And we don't sit there and talk about church for the full hour we work out with them. But we get to put little seeds in place. Hey, how you doing this week? Good. God's always good. Just putting that little thing out there. There was a man sent from God whose name was Tim. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Guys, Easter is seven days away. It is the one time that every Christian, nominal or otherwise, shows up for church. It is one of the easiest days in the world to get somebody to come to church with you. Have you told anybody? Have you shared it at all? Or are you just sitting there still a baby Christian? You got the Holy Ghost. Thankfully, we get that with our salvation. Old Testament Christians got that, and it disappeared. Ours stays put. But what good does it do us if we don't tell anybody about it? 
Because see, we sit in church and somebody else opens the Bible and tells us all about it. And there are those in here, you could win every Bible trivia contest for the remainder of your life. You would rock out who wants to be a Bible millionaire or Bible jeopardy. And you'd just, you'd kill it because you know every fact under the sun. But you don't use it to tell anybody. What good is knowledge without sharing it? Guys, God's been immensely good to us. I spent weird amount of time this morning telling you about a turtle because it was free. God's given you something so much greater than a turtle, but you don't tell anybody about it. What are we going to do about that? This isn't, by the way, just for adults, this is for kids. Some of the best witnesses I know are kids. My grandfather passed away a year ago yesterday. Um, Died of a whole bunch of lung issues due to his excessive smoking and drinking issues over decades of abuse to his own body. Okay, But we're pretty sure my grandfather's in heaven today. By the way, one of the ways we are pretty sure is because when Anna was about seven years old, she went through the entire plan of salvation with my grandpa and told him, you're going to go to hell because you're bad if you don't get saved. (laughs) He listened. In fact, as far as we know, that may have been the best time he's ever listened to the gospel. It's hard to not listen when a cute little kid tells you you need Jesus. John the Baptist was called from a child. Samuel called from a child. Jeremiah called from a child. Being a witness isn't just for grown-ups. By the way, it's not just for pastors. It's for everybody. Amen. All age groups. All two genders. Because you know people, I'll never touch. I know people, you'll never see. Who are we telling about Jesus? Next week is Easter. Easter. The one week most of the world thinks about Jesus outside of Christmas, who are we going to tell about it? Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you do for us. Lord, help us. Help us to focus this week on doing something to tell someone else about you. Lord, I'm asking you to give us opportunities, not just to have the will and the, uh, the want to tell somebody, but Lord, I'm asking you to plop opportunities in our laps to, to share the gospel, to share what you've done for us. Lord, if we can remind people about how good you are and how much you've helped us and how much you love us, that alone could help so many more people. Lord, thank you for loving us and allowing us to have something as immense and incredible as salvation. Lord, thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I talked a lot about salvation the last little bit here, but you may be sitting in this room today and you've never done that before. You've never actually asked Jesus to come into your heart. Friends, I mentioned it several times. It's a free gift. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, and he paid your sin debt for you. It's not something you can earn. It's not something you can do by being good, like I mentioned about Zacharias and Elizabeth. Yes, they were excellent people, good people. That didn't earn them a place in heaven. It was the sacrifice of Jesus that got them into heaven. If you're here today and you've never actually asked Jesus to come into your heart and save you, we'd love to have somebody open the Bible and show you how that can happen today. If you're like that and would like to know about it, would you just raise your hand? Just raise your hand. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, those of you that are, if you're saved, if you just raise your hand, you've asked Jesus into your, sa- into your heart as Savior. It's most of us in this room. So let me ask you this. Those of you that just raised your hand, what are you doing with it? Who are you telling about it? Because it can't just be Pastor Bish telling people. It can't just be me. It can't just be Mr. Graff out preaching on the streets in Hartford. It can't just be a handful of us that come out on Friday and Saturday. We all need to be a witness. As the piano plays, the altar's open. We need more witnesses. There's a man sent from God. Will you be sent from God this week to reach somebody, to help somebody, to introduce somebody to Jesus?
If you're here this morning and you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, please. Brother Rob is down here. No one's looking around. We'd love to be able to open the Bible and show you what Jesus did for you. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for for loving us. Lord, thank you for the free gift of salvation. I, again, I'm asking you to give us, give us a chance, give us opportunities to show someone else how much you love them. Lord, help us to be a good witness. Help us to be witnesses of your light sometime and somewhere this week, Lord, as often as we possibly can. Lord, thank you again for loving us. Thank you for this church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Brother Rob has a couple of announcements and then we'll be dismissed. All right. Thank you, Brother Tim. I appreciate that. And uh, something we can definitely put into practice this week. And it's one of the, as he mentioned, one of the easiest times to put that into practice this week. Because next Sunday is Easter. And uh, as we mentioned, of course, uh, special music, special stuff going on all throughout the day uh, next week. Including Easter egg hunt for the young, the youngest junior church. The older junior church is going to have other things for them as well. Teens, we got Easter breakfast in Sunday school next week. So be here for that. And uh, invite somebody. Invite somebody to be here. Just anybody that you meet. And... Uh, Speaking of the junior churches, we do need more junior church workers. Uh, just somebody that, that is able to uh, sit there and, and help out and, and uh, take people to and from the bathroom, all of that stuff that is, that is an important part uh, of the ministry. And uh, we need people, if you're able to help out with that, uh, you can see Pastor myself, Brother Tim, any one of us, Mrs. Clack, uh, would be, uh, be willing to answer your questions about that. Uh, Sunday school teachers, there are uh, Sunday school lessons on the counter, Easter Sunday school lessons for you uh, for next week. So if you have not grabbed that yet, make sure you grab that. Uh, let's see, Brother Tim mentioned so many opportunities. We uh, Teens go out on Fridays at 3.45 after school and uh, go out and, uh, and knock on doors and, and invite people to church and tell them about, uh, about Christ. And then Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. as well, meeting here at the church and doing the same thing. Uh, this Wednesday, we have our uh, midweek service, Bible study, uh, Patch the Pirate Clubs, Teen Church, all of that stuff going on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, for our academy, registration is open and uh, so for, uh, for this coming school year. And so contact the office. Uh, we have information online as well. And uh, classes, especially the elementary classes, filling up very, very quickly. So please make sure you don't delay in doing that. Uh, let me see here. I'll mention that one in just a second. Teens, this Friday, this Friday, come for our activity because it's my birthday. And it is that, is, that is our theme. We have theme nights just about every, every, uh, every week of the school year. And that's the theme this week is it's my birthday and bring me a present. And it's not a joke. I'm being serious about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, 6.30 to 9.30, the time is the same. We'll have a good time with that. And uh, I, we will hopefully have uh, something to give you as well. Um, let's see. Speaking of birthdays, on Tuesday, it is Brother Ken Lacombe's birthday. And uh, just got back from a week in Florida. And uh, so we'll wish him a happy birthday. On Tuesday, it is also uh, Natalie Ron's birthday. And the Rons are not here. They just got back from Texas, right? Texas. And, but they all got sick on the way home. And so pray for them. Their whole family is just, uh, just uh, dealing with it. So, but it's Natalie's birthday on Tuesday. Uh, let's see, on Thursday, it is Josh Nill's birthday. And as I mentioned, it's my birthday on Friday. Uh, is there anybody else that has a birthday this coming week? Someone that we don't have record of? No? Well, let's sing happy birthday to these then. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And uh, last announcement here, uh, immediately after we dismiss, uh, teens and parents of teens, including sixth graders that are going to be going into seventh grade in the fall, uh, we will be having a meeting about teen camp uh, this summer. We'll be having a meeting in, I don't know, what's her room number? Mrs. Mrs. Gerber's room. Most of you know where that is. Uh, Mrs. Gerber's room in the elementary hallway. I don't, she doesn't even know what her room number is. Okay. Um, I don't know what my classroom number is. I have no idea. But anyways, down in the elementary hallway, uh, we'll have a meeting about that. A lot of information to give you, and I'm excited about that. So uh, teens and parents of, of, of teens, uh, please be a part of that. Uh, please head right over there. And I promise I won't keep you very long, but uh, I do want to get the information into your hands. Let's stand together and uh, we will be dismissed with a word of prayer. Thank you for coming today. 
Heavenly Father, we, we love you and, and we thank you for the opportunity we have to tell people about you. Thank you for being such a good God. Thank you for the free gift of salvation that you've offered to each and every one of us. God, help us not to be selfish, uh, but help us to share that with others. Help us, to, help us to tell as many people as we can, just like John did, uh, about you and about uh, the, the salvation that we can have in you. God, I pray that you would uh, just remind us about that, especially this week being uh, the lead up to Easter. Would you just uh, keep that in our hearts and in our minds that we would uh, share that and be a witness to those around us. God, be with our pastor once again. Would you, would you strengthen him? Would you heal him? And uh, even as he's uh, leaving the hospital, God, would you somehow uh, provide answers and, and uh, uh, relieve the pain and the frustration uh, as a result of that? God, would you uh, bless us now as we go? Keep us safe. Give us a good afternoon. Bring us back again tonight to hear more from your word. We love you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here today. You are dismissed.